Hey everyone, welcome back to High Five Church History. So last week we talked about the persecution that the early church faced, especially from the Roman Empire. Now, of course, as early Christianity is continuing to expand, yes, they're going to face persecution, but they're also going to begin to face heresies or wrong teachings and assertions about Christ and the Bible. Today, we're going to tackle one of those huge heresies known as Gnosticism. In this video, we're going to talk about three different things concerning Gnosticism. First, what is it in the first place? Second, what did it teach? And third, how did it affect Christianity? So let's go ahead and look at that definition. I'm going to define Gnosticism as the spiritual belief which asserts that secret knowledge is necessary for salvation. In fact, the very word Gnosticism comes from the Greek word gnosis, meaning knowledge. This belief was held by followers of a variety of religious backgrounds. Now let's go to what exactly did Gnosticism teach? And with that, I'm gonna give six different assertions. First, the beginning of Gnosticism can be found in the writings of people like Philo of Alexandria, who lived from 20 BC to AD 40, and was developed more by other philosophers. Second, Gnosticism sought to explore the nature of evil, the nature of God, God's relationship to the world, and the presence of evil in the world. Now, let's really hone in on exactly what it taught. Concerning the nature of evil, Gnostics taught that physical things such as buildings, bodies, and rocks were inherently evil, while spiritual things were good. Concerning the nature of God, Gnostics taught that the God of the Old Testament who created all things was not the highest God, but a lesser one, because he allowed evil into his creation. They believed that the highest God had created a lesser, more unholy God who then did the same thing over and over again. After many inferior gods had been created, the God of the Old Testament came into being. This God had so much unholiness that he was perfectly fine with allowing evil into his world. Now concerning Christ... Gnostics taught that Jesus was the highest divine creature that the true God created. Christ was not incarnated because he was too holy to indwell a physical body that was inherently sinful. Furthermore, the Gnostics taught that salvation, which Jesus offers, is the freeing of the human spirit from the body. And it is this kind of salvation that is this true knowledge Jesus offers. This is the gnosis of Gnosticism. Consequently, Gnostics denied the incarnation of Christ, his physical ministry, his physical death on the cross, and his physical resurrection. Now concerning ethics, the Gnostics taught two broad teachings. Some Gnostics believed that people could live completely immoral lifestyles because the soul was remaining pure, although they were being corrupt with their bodies. Others, however, asserted that because the body was inherently wicked, they should punish their bodies with starvation and mistreatment. So we see a definition of Gnosticism, some of the teachings of Gnosticism, but now we're going to look at how Gnosticism really influences Christianity. First, Gnosticism led Christians to directly oppose its heretical teachings. Church tradition asserts that the Apostle John wrote the Gospel according to John and 1 John to deal with Gnosticism. For example, in 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, John writes that he and the other disciples saw and looked upon Jesus and touched him with their hands. In other words, John is saying Jesus was much more than just a spirit that seemed to come in a physical body. Jesus actually was a person in a physical body. Irenaeus, who lived from AD 130 to 202, and Tertullian, who lived from AD 160 to 220, were both early Christian writers who directly opposed Gnosticism, and you can read many of their writings to this day. Second, Gnosticism drove Christians to define themselves, and Christians did so by affirming the teachings of the books of the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. Third, Gnosticism spurred Christians to write short confessions that defined the doctrines of Christianity. One such confession is the Apostles' Creed. Again, these kind of creeds allowed Christians to quickly say, here's what we believe and here's what we don't believe. In other words, they were able to summarize the doctrines of the church. Fourth, Gnosticism led some Christians to devalue the worth of their bodies. So they turned to asceticism and monasticism. Asceticism is the belief that one soul can be pure if he punishes his body with beatings or being isolated, extremely isolated. Monasticism leads people to isolate themselves from society so that they can undergo extreme discipline to purify their souls. 
Today, we looked at a definition of Gnosticism, its broad teachings, and how it influenced Christianity. But the question I want to ask for us is, how are we combating the heresies of today? Yes, Gnosticism was an issue that was going on in the church over 2,000 years ago, but even today, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of movements, a lot of different traditions that are asserting, hey, this is the truth. This is actually what happened in Christianity. What we need to do with those teachings or those assertions is compare them to the teachings of Christ and the scripture themselves. If they match up, we can affirm them, we can teach them, we can live by them. But if they don't match up, then we need to deny them and not allow them to come into the church. That is our duty. That is our responsibility today, just as it was 2,000 years ago. Are we doing that? Are we taking the time to know of the different trends and philosophies and movements going on and then comparing them to scripture? It's our duty. It's a joyful duty because we get to stand for, live for the truth, and we get to do so with love and care for our fellow neighbor. Thanks again for watching this video. I'm going to ask that you will like the channel, subscribe, and please leave your comments below. Thank you again for watching. It is so exciting to have you here with me today, and I can't wait to see you again soon as we continue to high-five church history.